guys, welcome to Brickforge. This is Mike and welcome to a second episode of a series called Bricks of the Past. Boing! Now, this is not like a review video. I am doing like a comeback to the old sets. We just got some of these from eBay last time. If you haven't seen it already, I did uh, I did this guy. That's the Lunar Launch Site, Spireus set from 1994, I believe. Uh, that was one of the fun sets to come back to because as a kid, I mentioned in the previous video that I did have this. I had a blast playing it and it was such a cool comeback for me to, to witness and like to just remind myself how cool the bricks were back in the days. Today I'm doing a different set from Spyrus. I just want to take a look at this one. Um, Jack was promising to make this one after I did this one, but he's not here. So you have to deal with me now. I don't know, he's on vacation. Anyway, that's, that's this uh, Sor Centurion Sorcerer or Sorcerer Centurion from Spyrus 6939 is the set number. Small set, uh, it's actually comparable in size to this guy. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's just get this guy into the Lightroom and take a look what that beam was all about back in 1994. Let's fly in! And here is the saucer landing. There we go. Disclaimer, before we start, I just want to uh, notify you guys that we are missing pieces in this one. We are, you can see the stud shooters are, were not available back in 1994. So are, those are supposed to be the antennas, like these guys in the front, they're supposed to be in dark blue transparent. We don't have them, same for the back they were missing from the eBay used set. So yeah, that things could happen when you buy from eBay. Just to let you know, those supposed to be blue antennas and those supposed to be blue antennas. Boom, forgot we got one in the box uh, out of four in this set. So yeah, that's the missing piece. Uh, they're supposed to look like that. You can see on the picture, not that much different, is it? Originally, this set has only 222 parts, that triple twos. And the uh, retail price back in the day was just $27. Well, you gotta factor in the, uh, the buying power of the dollar back in 1994. And also, basically, Lego was cheaper back in the day. So, for $27 nowadays, uh, well, I guess you can get such set because if the price to piece ratio remains at $10, 10 piece, sorry, 10 uh, cents per piece, then you've got yourself a uh, $27 equivalent of today's standards, kind of. What the set was, is was a massive saucer for me back in the, as I was a kid. I think I got this one when I was like nine or 10. And the main function was to drop the buggy. It was really cool. Technic elements were holding it together. There was like a tile slider in the middle and in the back. And the Technic pin was just holding the both uh, of the halves of the ship together. And when you pulled it apart, you got yourself a small buggy that was dropping out of the second canopy. Normally, this would be where the second pilot resides, but they made it so that the buggy fits in. And once it's there, you got yourself a second uh, pilot in form of the droid. This minifig was actually the most common minifigure from the Spyrus Dim in, uh, in 1994. It had all the cool things that you would expect from a spaceship uh, in that somewhat of an 80s era nostalgia space, if I may. And the coolest thing probably was the drop function I showed you before, but also it had the crane arm. This thing was able to hold a minifigure. Let me see if I can get this guy out of there and get him into the arm. That was made to like either hold the minifigure or some stolen data containers that Spyrus was stealing or some sorts of things. You never got anything beyond that small buggy. I wonder if that buggy even fits in there. I don't think it does. Maybe, maybe if I grab it like that and like try to maybe... Actually, it is working, so you can actually grab the buggy. It's not holding very well, but still, it was some sort of a play feature that you could, well, uh, enjoy <laughs> to some point, right? And I just noticed also that one of these elements is not right. It's supposed to be black. But hey, that's what you get when you buy a used set, okay? I don't really mind. I'm gonna search for that one in the studio once I have a few more moments. But now, you gotta deal with that, what we have. Uh, still, uh, I mentioned in the previous video that they had the arrows printed, so it was showing basically all the functions of the set. Any moving parts were shown by bricks, so kids can just recognize the functions and just, well, have fun with it without thinking too much, I guess. 
Um, the prints that were for Spyro specific sets were this guy, like the tile with the computer. It was very Spyro-y. The overall theme of this black, red and silver was uh, consistent among all the items from Spyro's. I wish to do really a uh, next one is the Robo Guardian set, the bigger robot. That was my favorite from the whole wave and uh, I wish we're gonna get him at some point in the future so I can show you guys uh, this one as well. I think that theme is a good way to start basically with that uh, Bricks of the Past series that we have in plants. Uh, you don't see those pieces anymore. I mean, those are quite uncommon right nowadays if they even appear in the sets currently. This is somewhat of an antenna piece. Um, those guys I mentioned, they never appear again. Uh, in today's sets, the triple connection uh, elements. Uh, these are kind of rare. I mean, you have them still, but they are not as used as, as they used to be. Um, and otherwise, I think the fairly fairness of the remainder of the set is quite common. Those like uh, vertical um, stabilizers are somewhat appearing in city sets nowadays, so they are not that uncommon. But that piece, this one, you don't see quite often. Uh, I think it's, it may show up in some sort of a plane or something from time to time, but I don't remember if I saw this piece over the last two or three years of LEGO. Correct me if I'm wrong, maybe it's somewhere there, but for me, uh, this, this could be like a discontinued piece as well. I really still cannot get over the fact how simple these sets were. I mean, as a kid, all I remember was the complexity and the crazy functions, load of functions that these had. I remember this one being just so much in a dream sphere for me, and once my parents got it to me, I was just beyond happy. It was the biggest set for me. Uh, I got the Mtron magnetizer as well. That one just blew my mind back in the days. And now as an adult, if I, if I hold them for, uh, for like oh, after all those years for the first time, it just feels different. It feels like, yeah, I remember playing with that, but it feels so small in my hands. <laughs> it's like, I don't know guys, probably many of you, if you're watching our channel as adults and you're seeing all these old sets, you may actually think the same way yourselves. Like, hey, when I was a kid, Lego used to be so big, maybe because I was smaller or I was, I was having just lower expectations of a set or something like that. I think that's, that's, that's the case here. I just had lower expectations and like, it was easy to amaze me back in the days. And now I just build like an, you know, 8,000 piece Millennium Falcon and I'm not impressed after like a week. <laughs> I just build it and like, yeah, it's there. And we have so many big sets in the studio that you don't really appreciate the old sets anymore. And you don't really appreciate the small scale they were, they were um, in and the amount of fun they delivered. And this is a great example for Spyrus to just show you that that what kids used to play with. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I used to play with. And it, it delivered. It was all I dreamt for in a Lego set. And now you get all these fancy Bugatti Chirons and you don't see that again, right? Well, that's a memory lane for me, uh, a trip down the memory lane and uh, a good, I guess, thought to hold. And those old school style manuals, they were fun. I mentioned also that they did not show how many bricks you needed for each step, so you had to figure it out on your own. It was easier to skip steps because of that. Well, I guess it just required more thinking process to build a set properly without having like lists of bricks for each set that you rely on so much nowadays. So just a reminder that you guys have it, everybody, we guys, you guys, have it easier nowadays building LEGO. Yeah, definitely. This was the same graphical process, but a bit different approach with uh, just showing how the set progresses each page without mentioning how many bricks you need. And there was no bricks uh, list in the back. So you, when you lost something, you had to figure out what it was. And I think we're gonna finish this trip down the memory lane on this mark remark. Used to be Lego used to be different back in the days and uh, used to incorporate a bit different approach, right? So let me know what you guys think, um, what you guys like about the old sets. Do you have an old sets collection? Do you have some vintage sets with you? For us at Brick Vault, we are actually starting kind of a vintage collection, to be honest with you. Like when the channel started, we only had sets from the current year when we started. It was like 2015. So the guys had a few more, maybe a few sets uh, from the old days that they used to play with, like the Black Barracuda, the Black Seas Barracuda, or a few other sets. For me, all my old sets are back in my parents' house in, in Poland. And uh, here I just uh, try to come back to those sets and I think uh, we're gonna try to get a few more sets to show you guys and uh, to appreciate in our studio with all the new stuff that we have. 
Uh, definitely going to be a section that we're going to be coming back to. And I hope you guys will enjoy it. Let us know in the comment section maybe what you want to see in the next um, episodes of Bricks from the Past. I think we're going to get maybe one or two more Spyro sets because it's, it's so nostalgic for me and I think Jack likes the theme as well. Jack is really into like insectoids, I think, theme. That was a cool one. And maybe we're gonna get some sets of that too. But maybe you guys have some ideas what you want to see. Maybe a theme you skipped as a kid and you're an adult now. You want to see some comebacks to these old themes. Let us know. We'll see what we can handle. We'll see what we can get from eBay without draining our wallets too much. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, let us know. I would really appreciate some ideas. And uh, if you like those episodes, of course, leave a like, subscribe. You click that bell button uh, that makes us um, make more tells us that we're gonna make more for you guys and keeps us going so thanks so much for watching guys it was a 6939 saucer centurion from spyrus 994 set it was mike and i'll see you next time on break vault Hey, thanks for watching this video. As always, you can leave a like and subscribe. And also, if you want to support our channel, you can head over to our web store at www.brickvault.toys. You can find awesome models there. All these guys that I have on the table are available in the forms of instructions and parts lists. Every purchase you make supports our channel and also the designers that are working with us on those uh, amazing models. So consider doing that. Thanks so much. And it was Mike. I'll see you again on Brick Vault.